All right, we're at the trailhead for Maine Hudson Trails, and we still have about 1.8 miles to go before we reach the first touch, so our journey's not done yet. Hopefully Dave's gonna be there, and he'll show us around the place a little bit. Maine Hudson Trails has been a concept that's been tossed around for probably a decade or more by a group of, of individuals based here in western Maine looking to create a nature-based tourism destination to really draw tourists and visitors to the region year-round to create increased economic stability for the region while drawing on its strengths, its strengths being its natural resources. For a long time, there's been some concern that the ethic of public access for these lands wouldn't remain. And so the organization was kind of founded on those principles of doing it in a way that helps protect access for people in the region in perpetuity. When I became governor, the, the vision was is that what we were trying to do is build a foundation that will be here for the next 30, 40, 50 years. So what we looked at here is we looked at an opportunity and a whole group of people that got together and you know, they said, we live in this area, we live in this state, this is the right way to do it. So it came from the ground up. It didn't come from Washington or Augusta, it came, it came right here locally, ground up the right responsible way. And if you're gonna do anything in Maine, you've gotta have that local support because it, it, it's gonna have legs, it's gonna be sustainable. And then you had the private sector committed to doing this quality with the people like L. O. Bean and others who, who represent that kind of quality that wanted to participate in the local community. L. O. Bean got involved in, with Maine Hudson Trails because of what it stands for. I mean, it's, it's a healthy outdoor recreation. There's actually a number of angles that appeal to L. O. Bean. A lot of the activities that would use this as a non-motorized system, so a lot of the activities that people would do mountain biking, hiking, cross-country skiing, paddling, are things that L. O. Bean supports through its business. Uh, we also believe in preserving the outdoors and we've preserved access to a lot of places in Maine that were formerly privately owned that now people can go to and enjoy, like this point of land looking over the big O's. One of the great things about Maine Hudson Trails, it's not all about the trails. If you like, you can mix it up with some paddling right on Flagstaff Lake. In 2008 and 2009, we've opened two huts. Our plan is to open up to 12 huts located between the New Hampshire border in western Maine all the way up to Moosehead Lake. And the idea is that we'll connect several communities that have been tourism destinations at one time or another, but economically have had plenty of struggles. And we're trying to create something for the whole region to rally around, to help brand the region, and really to become part of the fabric of, of Maine. It's something that when people talk about Maine, and they talk about Acadia National Park, they talk about lobsters, and they talk about that incredible hut system in western Maine. Hey Dave. Hey, how are you? I'm glad you could come up. Yeah, it's great. I just had a great walk up here, so I want to hear more about Maine Hudson Trails and you what's bet. going on. You bet. You found the right guy. Good. I'm the executive director, uh -huh. and uh, this is our second hut. We just opened it in January, and uh, we're open year-round for guests to hike and ski and paddle in here and enjoy the outdoors and have a bed and some food while they're up here. That's great. Well, it looks great. I can't wait to see the inside of them. Very nice. Well, let's head on in. Yeah, let's go do it. Great. So you were saying, Dave, that any guest can get this tour to kind of see what your energy process is here at the camps. We offer it every night, and it turns out to be one of the highlights of people's visits. Nice. Um, so James, when we were designing the energy systems here, the first thing that we do is try and determine how we can use as little as energy as possible. And one of the biggest drains on the batteries is lights. Yeah. So a really cool and simple feature here is these light tubes that you'll see throughout the interior of the building. They bring uh, light in from outside. and don't you know require that we don't need the lights during the day that is cool so nice let's go show you the rest so this is the green nerve center down here Dave it is this is where it all happens so if 
right here on our right, James, this is our battery bank. And it's a 48 volt system, and this is where all of the power that we generate here is stored. So the, the power comes in from the solar panels, goes through the inverters, and goes right into the batteries. And then we, we draw on it as we need. If we go over here, James, this is the, the base of the compost and toilet. So this is the, the chamber, if you will. What it does is it separates out the liquid from the solid and composts the solid. And all we have to do is add a little bit of wood shavings to, uh, to oxygenate the system, if you will. Great. So it's, it's, again, it's really simple and basic, but highly effective. Fantastic. So the other key piece down here is our wood gasification boiler. And it provides all of our heat and domestic hot water for the hut. So again, simple, but highly efficient and highly effective. You can see one of the new huts behind me and also the large solar panel. Now the panel provides electricity for the huts and the main lodge, which keeps everything off the grid. And this enables people to come here, see the forest, enjoy the hiking, while supporting a project focused on sustainability. People come out and enjoy what we're working on every day and, and it's reading the guest log and hearing about stories about 50th birthday parties and the kids playing and having a great time and going paddling and hiking and you know connecting people to the outdoors is what we're about and it's what L.O. Bean's about it's what the Appalachian Mountain Club is about and so it's it's certainly what I'm about and that's what that's what makes it so rewarding for me to be involved in something like this.